G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. The year 2020 has been pretty big for War Thunder, seeing a lot of new additions, not only in vehicles, but of course in mechanics, graphics, and other monetization options. There are some things that Gaijin have done really well this year, and there are some things that Gaijin have left behind. There are some things that have been introduced into the game that need an, a bit of uh, love and a bit of care, as well as some things that need addressing due to their constant appearance in game. Today we're going to talk about these things, but I want to get a couple of things out of the way. War Thunder is not an inherently bad game, and I don't think the developers are malevolent as such. A lot of people tend to accuse the developers of both of these things, but uh, I'd like to keep that to a minimum for this video. We're going to be giving some constructive criticism. We're not going to be insulting the devs, and we're not going to be doing things that would otherwise stifle the conversation. War Thunder has made a lot of big strides this year, and we cannot let that up. We also shouldn't make our voices not heard. Well, we should we should make our voices heard. We should speak when there is an issue. And this is kind of what I'm doing today for some sort of uh, roundabout issues that are still not critical to the game, but would certainly be really nice, especially for the average player. Before we jump into the things that Gaijin can fix for 2021, I'd first of all like to thank everyone for the absolutely amazing year it has been for the channel. We've reached 40,000 subscribers, which is not quite where I wanted to be. I, I really wanted to be at 50,000, but you know what? I'm going to take 40,000. You guys have been able to make that a really, really good margin. I honestly didn't think I would ever get this far because I thought I would just give up, but here I am, 40,000. On to the next milestone we go, and I really appreciate all of you guys subscribing. I also appreciate you guys commenting and liking the videos because for me, I, I love seeing that. I love seeing the thousands of people that have liked my videos and the thousands of people that have commented on my videos over the year. Over the year. Um, for me, I love reading comments. So for those of you that comment and think it goes unnoticed, it doesn't. I read them all. Uh, but just letting you know, even though I can't respond to every single one of them, I do appreciate them nonetheless. I especially appreciate those that have supported me monetarily, either that be through the Air Models link, which you'll find in the description below, through Patreon, which I don't really fuss about, although I really appreciate the people that spend money there. Um, I also appreciate the people that subscribe to my Twitch channel through Twitch Prime or through their own funds. I sincerely appreciate that. You guys are absolutely incredible, so thank you so much for that. This year, I'm hoping that we can get 50k. Uh, maybe if we're lucky, we can push to 60k subs by the end of the year. That would be an absolute dream of mine. And uh, I would love to be with you all the way through that. I would also love for you guys to join the Discord if you don't mind. Well, if you, if you do mind, because we have some really, really fun community events, I guess you can call them. They're sort of ad-lib Discord chats, and we just end up chatting for hours on end, um, end up squatting. We end up just just having a good time, and I really enjoy that. I, it's a really, really good value, and it's something that I would recommend that we sort of do a little bit more often, provided that I have the time, of course. Uh, this year is probably going to be absolute shit show in regards to that, but nonetheless, I appreciate everyone who joins and is active on Discord. Anyway, ladies and gents, on with the list of things that Gaijin can improve for the year 2021. Starting with Air RB, and first we're going to be addressing the grind. Now, the grind in Air RB actually isn't too bad, provided that you have a high tier premium and some premium time by your side. You can unlock some of the smaller tech trees within an evening, if you know what you're doing. However, for those of you that are newer to the game and don't have premiums, it's going to be fairly hard, especially in those larger tech trees where there are more vehicles to unlock, as well as not really knowing how to do things not knowing which vehicles are competitive, and of course, having enemies that are kind of unknown to you. So, one of the things that a lot of people have uh, sort of discussed or asked for is a reduction in RP cost. Now, for me, I understand that Gaijin is a business and needs to make money, and so what I would recommend instead is for them to either give more discounts on things like talismans, or, in my opinion, which is the better solution, I would suggest using the Warp One Shop to offer higher tier premiums other than rank 1, 2, or 3 even, maybe rank 4 premiums with a fair amount of uh, Warbots, say 5,000 or 
you know, increasing that. You, you would have to do some adjustments to the war bond shop, but let's say 5,000 is a really good margin. Uh, I think that would take a fair amount of work, or perhaps 30 special tasks instead of 14. I think that would be a little bit more reasonable, and considering that with the battle pass you can unlock one a day, that would be a whole month worth of grinding the battle pass and with a tier 3. So I think that would be kind of reasonable. I think Gaijin would sort of uh, not lose any money. In fact, I think they would gain a lot more player base. They would gain a lot more day-to-day -day player base with that one. So my recommendation for the RRB grind from Gaijin is not to reduce it, not to give people free shit, but to offer more premiums, or at least higher tier premiums, with a higher price tag or with a higher grind level in the Warbond shop. Next up for ARB we have the stock missile grind. Missiles at top tier are the main source of weaponry and they'll be your main source of kills throughout the entirety of that tier and they will be from basically this particular tier on. Planes like the F4E and the MiG-21 BIS regularly rely on missiles to get kills as well as to force opponents into vulnerable situations where they can be either killed by a second missile or be taken out by guns. This is particularly important for those planes that are stock because stock planes will not have these missiles. Furthermore, planes that have these particular potent missiles such as R60s or the AIM-9B or AIM-9E Sidewinder will start with no missiles and for this I would recommend that Gaijin at least gives them the basic missiles. So in the case of the MiG-21 BIS I would recommend that they give them R3R or R3Ss and for the Phantoms I would say AIM-9Bs or AIM-9Es would be sufficient in order to sort of get the planes a little bit of potency early on in their stock grind. This would reduce overall frustration and would give these particular planes a little bit more of what they're supposed to have. The next issue for ARB is something that isn't exactly critical but would really be a welcome change to the game, particularly for those low to mid tiers. And this is the matchmaker. Now I don't particularly mean the battle rating system, we will get into that in a moment, but I would like to talk about the nation vs nation matchmaker. Now personally I quite like asymmetric matchmakers simply because it's uh, pretty fun to face something that is not your own plane. What I would love to see is a return to the Axis vs Allies matchmaker for World War II and a sort of return to the Allies or NATO vs Warsaw Pact for the Cold War or at least rank 6 and what is to be future rank 7 jets and that would be really really nice. You would still have things like Zeros vs P-51s. You would still have things like Phantom vs MiG or Sabre vs MiG and I think that that would be a really really nice return. Having FGR-2s fight alongside MiG-21s doesn't really feel right and doesn't really make sense when both the F-4E and the F-4EJ fight alongside each other and at the same time P-47s and Zeros fight on the same team. Personally, I would love to see a return to that matchmaker, and of course, Sweden, being the oddball that it is, can sit on either side. And I guess China can as well. Next up, we have the spotting system. Now, the spotting system has a habit of being good one patch and being absolutely terrible the next. You might have noticed, especially recently, at least in patch 2.3, that you might have made a 180 degree turn, only to realise that you've been missiled by someone that is right behind you. For me, this is nothing but bad gameplay and is extremely poor on Gaijin's half and should be fixed as soon as possible. There should be a permanent solution for this, especially for those who have level 75 experted or aced crews. You should be able to see almost all the way to 8 kilometers, in my opinion, at least for top tier jets. Maybe 6 kilometers is a really good spot for props, but we can debate this in the comment section below. Personally, I just would like to have certainty when I turn and when I make maneuvers that are costly that I will not be jumped by someone or missiled by something that I cannot see. Next up we have another issue for top tier jets and that is the matchmaker in terms of its size. Now, personally I think 15 versus 15, which is what we currently have, is a little bit too much. It's a little bit too crowded and it would require Gaijin to make bigger maps, which and honestly is a little bit of work uh, that can be avoided by this little simple trick 
that is reducing the number of players in a match. Therefore you reduce the density of players in a map and this would be conducive to good gameplay because you do not have as many clusterfucks as you otherwise would. You also have more opportunities for a 1 versus 1 or a 2 versus 2 which puts the skill of the pilot at its maximum limits. Not only that but at top tier at this particular era of jets the average dogfight normally took place between about 4 aircraft and this would be sort of more conducive to historical accuracy which there is a massive push from the community for this type of stuff. 7 vs 7 would be a really good idea to at least try because not only would it provide better gameplay but it would also shorten the queue times. You would therefore be allowed to increase the rate of battle rating decompression giving you an overall battle rating spread to 11 which we will discuss later. Now we're going to move on from ARB specific related issues to tanks. Now I'm not much of a tanker myself but I have played a fair bit of tanks and I own most of the tanks in War Thunder so hear me out on these ones and maybe if you're a bit more of a tanker than I am let me know in the comments section below what your opinions are. First of all I'd like to talk about Stock Heat FS. Now Stock Heat FS has been a fairly large issue for top tier MBT specifically who start off with high explosive anti-tank fins stabilized. Now this particular round is not effective against top tier MBTs because it's simply obsolete at this point. There are plenty of tanks with armor that easily blocks those types of shells. And what I would like to see is a particularly low power round that is APFSDS replace stock heat FS. Not to replace heat FS in general, but to make that an unlockable module and to replace that at stock round with perhaps a training round or perhaps something that is of lower potency. Uh, a good example of this would be say a lower powered round for something with a 105 at top tier. Let's say theoretically this thing has M900, let's say it's the Striker MGS at uh, 9.0 it has M900. Maybe it could start with M774 which is an APF SDS shell which can do the job but is not as high a penetrating as some of the other shells that we'll have access to. I think this is a good compromise between penetrating power and the stock grind. It makes things a little bit less frustrating for everyone and I think is a good middle ground once again for Gaijin to take. The next issue isn't exactly an issue for me as such but certainly affects other players and for me I think that warrants it being addressed and that is revenge cast. Revenge cast is basically when you die to a person and then go and kill them in a plane. Now seeing as though most tanks don't have the ability to effectively take on aircraft this is an easy way to get a kill but as well is an easy way to get some quick satisfaction and a quick frustration factor out of the people that you uh, revenge cast. The simple solution is to basically remove the kill cam or at least the position from the kill cam at the very very end. Showing where you were penetrated is an excellent part of War Thunder's kill cam but I think the end bit where it shows the uh, the tank and where it's positioned is a little bit too much. For me I think that that should be removed and that would basically do the best to resolve that kind of issue. The next issue that we're going to be talking about for tanks RB is the grind. Now differently to Air RB, you do need a multitude of vehicles for tanks RB. For tanks, you don't want to just go into battle with, say, an M60A1. I mean, not that you would want to go into battle with that thing at the moment, but say you want to go into battle with it, you would need several vehicles to support it. Things like the Sergeant York, things like aircraft, maybe a light tank. And this is where you start to run into problems with the grind. War Thunder's tank grind is fairly strenuous and one thing that I would really like to see is a reduction in the matches needed to unlock a lineup. This could potentially be offset by something else, I'm not quite sure what, but we can figure that one out in the comments section below. What I would really love to see is the ability to get a lineup a little bit easier. Perhaps if you unlock a particular tier of tank destroyer, you could unlock a particular tier of light tanks fairly easily. Maybe that would work that way, I don't really know. Let me know in the comments if you have a better solution, since those of you that are tankers will probably know better. Anyway, that would probably work best. Anything else? Let me know in the comments. 
The final thing for Tanks RB that I would like to talk about is map design. A lot of maps have really abusable spots where you can basically sit and camp all game, watch over half of the map and not really risk being shot at because you have so much cover. These particular spots need to go, they are not conducive to good gameplay and they just add to the stress that would otherwise be had by a lot of people grinding, doing tasks, doing other things, grinding events. And having an abusable spot to sort of make people upset is really not a good way to keep players. Gaijin really needs to work on their map design. I understand that their map design team is a two-man team and each map designer literally works on the map entirely themselves. They need a team to do this sort of stuff and they need people to review it and strenuously test it before it goes live. This sort of stuff needs to really be thought about, especially for tanks that relies a lot more on positions and a lot more on being in certain areas and, and controlling areas of the map. Maps like jungle are fairly okay for low tier, maps like Fulda are fairly okay for high tier, but a lot of the maps just don't suit the gameplay in mind, and this really needs to be addressed quite quickly. Moving on from Tanks RB, we have Naval. Now, I don't really play a lot of Naval. For those of you that are boat mains, if you will, uh, I would like to hear your opinions on these in the comments below, as well as your own list of things, because I have a little bit of an idea of what is wrong with Naval, but I would really like an expert opinion on this one. Now, for me, the biggest issue is the map design. Spawning out in the open is an absolute no-go. I don't know any other game that does that and is successful. Spawning out in the middle of the open basically leaves it to be a turkey shoot within the first 10 seconds of the game. I have actually died in the first 10 seconds of a match because some guy shot their, their shell and it just happened to land on my ammo rack and just absolutely blow me up. For me, that is easily the most irritating thing about any video game, poor map design, and Gaijin is well known to not be great at map design. That is one thing that they really need to work on. Another thing I would love to see is a little bit more differentiation between the different classes of ships in terms of their mechanics. I don't really know how this could potentially work, perhaps spotter planes or something else of that kind of effect could be used. And a third thing I would absolutely love to see is a reduction in the ability of the anti-air armament for most ships. I think if you control the armament or at least if you select the target it should open up at uh, the ideal distances. Say for 303 caliber machine gun it should be about 700 meters, for 50 caliber machine gun say 1200 meters, and for 20 mils say 1500. And of course you can go up bigger and bigger until about say 2 kilometers. I think if you're above 2 kilometers, the AA shouldn't open up at all unless you're manually aiming it. And then maybe it would be okay. But for me, Naval needs an absolute metric shit ton of work. Uh, so I would rather leave that to the comment section below. Discuss away and let me know. The next thing we need to discuss after naval battles is Helicopter EC. Helicopter EC is an absolute shit show at the moment with KA-50s and KA-52s ruling everything with their Vichyrus missiles. The Vichyrus missile is basically the ultimate multi-purpose weapon and most of those helicopters have 12 or 6 of them as well as Iglas and a, I think it's 2A26 cannon or something like that. Basically the BMP's 20mm cannon uh, which is ridiculously powerful. These particular helicopters rule everything and it has basically become a pay to win shitfest. What needs to change is these particular battles need to be either moved to co-op where you have AI or bots to kill in a certain time uh, or alternatively the battle ratings need to be moved into certain sections. KA-52s and say uh, Apaches or the like or something similar should be moved all to the same sort of area and then of course you should have the low tier AH-1Gs, the Hueys and the Cobras all sort of in the same group. Now of course there should be a little bit of variability and that makes perfect sense. These particular EC matches should be done on a thinner BR range and there should be more. An EC match is okay if there are four people playing it since a lot of the time you can just go over to the side and farm. Personally, I think that is an easier and more re relaxing way of doing it. It is also a better way to get helicopters to 
basically the average player who doesn't want to buy a premium. Now, moving on from game modes, we're going to be talking about balance next. These are some changes that would really make War Thunder's balance a lot better. First of all, we're going to talk about battle ratings. Now, the battle rating system is mostly okay. Most of the battle ratings that you'll find in War Thunder are kind of appropriate to the plane. So, oh, of course, they're also appropriate to the tanks and some of the helicopters, some of the ships, you name it, etc, etc. The point is, most battle ratings are fine. There are some battle ratings, of course, that are a little bit low, and there are some battle ratings that are a little bit high, and the way you fix this is with decompression. You open up the battle ratings a little bit more so that you have more room to fit those vehicles that fit in between and end up getting sort of shafted by the ones that are just simply better. Things like the F-104A at the moment in the aircraft tree tend to be shafted due to their lack of performance in a straight line against things like a Phantom, uh, but are too strong to put at something like 9.3 or even the higher ones to be put down to 10.3 or 10.0. Things like these are quite hard to, uh, to make work if you don't have that battle rating separation. Now, I can't really speak for tanks, but from personal experience, it's been more or less okay. So if you guys could find me a battle rating that could really do with decompression for tanks, let me know in the comment section below. I'm counting on you guys for that one. But I speak here mainly for aircraft, especially those high tier aircraft. Things like the Phantoms and the late MiG-21s can all go up in battle rating, giving a little bit more room for those at the lower end of the spectrum. Those particular planes without flares, without those radar guided missiles, and of course without the excellent avionics to boot. I think those particular planes shouldn't really be facing those high end performing F-4Es and MiG-21s, uh, not all the time at least. They should be given a little bit more separation just for a little bit more breathing room and I think that would make it perfect. The next balancing issue we're going to be talking about is the economy balancing, particularly repair costs. Repair costs have been the hot topic for a couple of years now and for me I don't really look at them but I understand that a lot of people that don't really have a lot of silver lions tend to struggle with the higher repair costs. Not only that, there are some repair costs that are a little bit out of the realm of reasonableness, and I think that these particular ones should be reduced. Personally, I don't think there should be a repair cost over 25... Uh, I think 25,000 would be the upper limit of what I would consider to be reasonable. I understand that there are reasons why you would balance things by repair cost, that reason being you can't balance the plane by either its performance or its battle rating. These particular cases, such as high tier props and high tier jets, tend to be the areas where high repair cost is usually a problem, but it is also the area where it's kind of needed in certain situations. I have a video where I sort of detail my reasoning and explanation, uh, and that will be linked in the description below, but the gist of it is basically some planes can't be balanced by repair cost, Oh, sorry, some planes can't be balanced by battle rating and therefore need to be balanced by repair cost. That doesn't mean that you should be paying 60,000 silver lines for a repair cost. I think it should be limited to 25,000 at the very most, and that would be around 3 kills for a premium account, or about 4 kills for a non-premium account, maybe 5. But for me, that would sort of be within the realm of reasonableness. Moving on from balancing, we're going to be discussing events. Recently, we have had the Operation Winter event, which is going on now as of New Year. And of course, we have other events like the Operation Summer, or Operation Heat, and the so-called Build-A-Bear construction or workshop events. The particular event that I'd like to talk about, about are the construction events, or the workshop events, or the Build-A-Bear events. We're just going to call them Build-A-Bear events. Now, these particular events are fairly grindy, and you will never, ever get all five vehicles. For me, that's an absolute travesty and you should not be able or you should not have to sacrifice getting certain vehicles just so that you can get certain other vehicles and then pay for them on the marketplace. For me, I think that that is not a great move by Gaijin. I think it's a fairly scummy business move. It should be addressed and it should be rectified. But for Gaijin, I doubt that they will in this particular circumstance. They've been discussed about several times, but
but I think it's really unacceptable that this is the case and it really needs to be addressed. Next up we have the idea of new additions to the game. Uh, power creep, if you will. I'd like to discuss this because it is a particular issue at the moment in Jets, but has been a little bit of an issue in War Thunder for a while. Generally, things get power crept in video games, which is kind of natural, but the degree that they get power crept in War Thunder is kind of significant. Things like the Harrier and things like the F-104s came in and swept the competition away by a long shot. This is due to the lack of battle rating decompression, and Gaijin really just needs to fix this with a little bit of BR decompression. These vehicles, however, need to be added at the right time, or they will end up with either Harrier GR1 syndrome or F84F syndrome. They'll either be extremely good or they'll be extremely bad. And this makes for poor gameplay and a very, very unsatisfied player base. The next issue that we are going to be talking about is premiums. Now, most premium vehicles that are added to the game are fine in terms of their battle rating. However, some of them are a little bit too high tier to come to the game. Things like the Terms T, which has been recently added at battle rating 9.7, faces top tier MBTs. So you can quite literally go and buy off the shelf, fresh from the download, a Terms T and fight people that have been playing this game for 7 years. For me, I don't think that is conducive to good gameplay and I think should be addressed seriously. Things like the Terms T, things like the GR1, and back in the day, things like the uh, Hunter FGA9, and anything else that sees top tier combat is ridiculous and I think should never have been added. Uh, and a couple of other examples I'd like to bring up is the IS6. That was one that used to see top tier combat, um, and of course, over the time has been power crept to shit, but that's something else for another day. The last two issues that I would like to talk about are somewhat related. Now, for me, this is something that is quite frustrating considering that I've played this game for six years now and I've basically seen the same things over and over again, repeating time and time again. That is to do with new patches. War Thunder's new updates are pretty good for the most part, however they often come with a few bugs that really should never have made it to the live server. Things that just aren't quality tested enough really need to be, uh, they need to have had that time to quality test them. And for War Thunder, they need themselves a good QA team. Even if they need to use the player base, which will sort of tie into my next point, Gaijin needs to take the time to make sure everything works before a big patch. Things like this are a PR nightmare. They are sort of the flagship and when you develop the hype and can't deliver, you end up with Cyberpunk 2077 syndrome where a lot of people literally return the game, throw it away, and say that they'll never play a CD Projekt Red game ever again because of the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. For me, I would really love to see Gaijin step up their game with their quality assurance and make sure things that are not game-breaking, things that are not annoying as fuck, like the texture bug that is happening right now, making sure that things like that never ever come to the game in the live build. The dev build is understandably buggy, and that is why we need to test things on this dev server. This ties me into my next point. The dev server needs to be for testing. It is not only a hype server, but it needs to be used to iron out the bugs that are in the patch and needs to be open for a week. Gaijin cannot be sitting around leaving these bugs up for 24 hours, taking them down and then never crossing them again. Things like the A4 Skyhawk bug that were in the game for a few hours and were basically found, discovered, and exploited by players makes us wonder why Gaijin need, makes us realize how much Gaijin needs a QA team. This particular incident was just to highlight one of many things that are plaguing the game and have plagued the game in the past, things that should never have happened and things that should never happen again. So in 2021, this would perhaps be my biggest suggest suggestion to Gaijin, have a volunteer QA team. Give them a decal, give them a title, maybe give them some free golden eagles for testing bugs and finding them out, giving them an easier way to report them on the forums, and giving them perhaps direct access to a dev or to someone who can forward things to the devs that can be immediately fixed. This particular stuff is incredibly crucial to the game because not every player will f uh, fight Harriers, 
but basically every player will encounter these odd bugs things like the texture bug things like server issues these particular things need to be addressed right away and just cannot be sent to the live server this is perhaps the biggest issue that I've had with War Thunder over the years, and this is perhaps the thing that I would like to see fixed the most.